Hello guys, I'm back with another fun card. This is called a floating panel card. It is, uh, again, I, um, I I just love things that make the standard A2 card uh, just a little bit more interesting, kind of create that wow element. So here we have this area that's cut out and the two, the coffee cup is holding the panels together. So it says, you call it coffee, I call it an emotional support beverage. So isn't that just a really fun, easy way? Let me show you how to cut up this paper to make this um, card a reality. So we're going to start off here with a piece of paper that is four and a quarter by 11. And then here at the bottom, you're going to cut off an inch and a quarter, then an inch and a half, and then you have the rest of the piece remaining. So from this side, you're going to score it at five and a half, which allows you to have your card base. Now this piece here, we're going to just put that into our card scraps. And this piece here becomes the bottom panel, which I know is really hard to see here at the moment, but you have your, your floating panel like this. Now on my card, I decided I wanted to stamp a background to kind of break that up. So let's do that. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna go ahead and place down the only place I want the background is on the front of the card. So I'm gonna use this line, the score line as a place to measure or to know where to put my stamp. So here's my background stamp that is just a bunch of coffee spills or coffee rings. And I'm gonna line the edge of my background up with the um, score line of my card. Now this background stamp almost comes to the edge, which, you know, it's fine. We, we're gonna play with that a little bit. And now I'm just going to take yellow ink and stamp on yellow paper. They're the same ink. This is so saffron paper, and I'm using so saffron ink. And I like the tone on tone that it's going to give us. So it's going to break up that paper without making it overly obnoxious. And I love stamp positioners because you can stamp more than once. With these big stamps, it is a huge game changer. And I love it. I think this down here just needs a little more... And I love it. Perfect. So I'm going to pull this piece up. Now I'm going to ask you, do you think this needs more? Less? Hmm. I'm going to add just a little bit of stamping to this piece right here. I just, I did this on my original too. I just needed a little something, I thought, in that corner. So I'm going to take the corner of this and kind of lay it just to... It just felt empty over there. I don't know. See, that little piece just makes it somehow feel a little more balanced to me. So we can get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. All right, so now we can bring in this um, white panel, which is going to help make everything pop. This is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And this you can go ahead and glue down if you want. Let's go ahead and do that. This is going to make a great panel for you guys to write your message, and it also helps make the gap in this card more noticeable so the recipient you know, has that wow factor. Now, to create the coffee cup, I used a new stamp of mine. It is this giant coffee cup. I stamped this on a real bright piece of paper, pink, on brown and on white and I cut all the pieces out and I did that off camera because you know I don't want to bore you guys to death and we can put them together to create um, a more of a 3d coffee cup if you you know if you'd like to we can put them together to create a more 3d looking coffee cup this technique is called paper piecing um, this is something we do a lot in scrapbooking but for whatever reason we don't do it as much in um, card making but I just thought this looked like kind of a fun thing to do today with this with this cup you could definitely just color it um, you could do lots of things with this but today this is how I chose to attack this I'm gonna take some brown ink uh oh I got some on my white that's okay and I'm just gonna brush some on the edges of this again this just makes the cup feel more dimensional it's gonna give it more of a 3d so this is wrapping around and that's all the brown we're gonna do And then I'm also going to grab some pink, and I'm not going to worry about getting it 
anywhere else. I don't, it doesn't bother me. And this is pink on pink, so it's not going to be in your face. I'm just sponging some on the sides of the cup, really focusing on the places where the cup is going to show. Now, I didn't do this on my original, so we can compare this one to the original and see if you think it, the step was worth, worth it. All right, so let's get rid of our scrap piece here so it's less distracting. And we have our three pieces of our cup, and we can go ahead and put glue on them. I think this was a uh, was worth doing here. And I see how I have a little bit of pink here showing. This just means when I cut it out, I probably cut it a little imperfectly. That's okay. I can just trim that off. Look at that. Does that look a little bit more three-dimensional and interesting? Let me show you the original. Which of those do you prefer? Can you see a difference? I, I definitely think that extra step was, was worth it. So here we can come back to this spot. And what we're going to do, this, nothing is gluing this down yet, and that's okay. We're just going to line this up with the bottom part of our card. You could flip it if you wanted to. There's no right or wrong. Um, I don't know why. It just feels right to go here, so I'm going to do that. And what we can do is put a little bit of glue onto the bottom of our coffee cup. And decide, I want it to be on an angle. So I'm going to have it lay right there, and I'm just going to make sure that it's lined up with the bottom of this card. Now I can pick this up and put some glue on the top of the cup and place that down. All right, so when we place that down, look at that. Now we have a card base with this floating um, panel here. See, there's nothing in here. It just looks really cool. I like the way that feels. Now there's a couple other things that I'm going to do here. First off, I want to add a sentiment um, I, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Um, but I, I wish you could feel this card. It feels to me just, I don't like it when it feels a little flimsy. So I found a way to reinforce this. So when I cut this coffee cup out, I didn't stamp, I just put a piece of scrap paper behind as I trim this out. So I would get two coffee cups. And you could line these up and glue them together, but I didn't like the way that that looked. Um, I don't know. You tell me. Is that bothersome to you? So I'm going to show you what I did. You guys can always tell when I'm about to do something silly. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife here. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife here and my ruler. And I'm going to line them up just like I would if I was going to glue them together. And I'm going to put my ruler along the edge of this here, and I'm going to put a real light pressure along the edge of the ruler. It's really just drawing a line. That's all I'm doing here. I guess I need to turn it. I'm just the way. So now I'm going to make sure that's lined up again. Make sure the cups are lined up again. Again, this is an optional step. You do not need to do this. Um, it just, to me, it made me feel a little bit more comfortable making this kind of card because the last thing I want to do is send a card to someone and have it fall apart. So then on those lines, I just took my scissors and, and chopped this off. Those can go in the, the garbage. And look here, now we have a piece that is flush. So now this is all flat. And to me, that looked better than just adding the cup on the back of the, the card. So I don't know, you tell me what you think. How do you deal with those problems? But I just really wanted something there to make this feel a little bit more um, like it all belonged together. And I don't think it took very long to do. That's another nice part. So the sentiment that I wanted to use for this is it says, you call it coffee. I call it my emotional support beverage, but unfortunately I wasn't able to fit, and I don't think I'm going to be able to this time. This sentiment is just a little bit too big for this card, um, but I really liked it and I wanted it to go together. I just think this is the perfect sentiment. This makes me so happy. Um, 
So what I'm gonna do is use my paper trimmer here to create a floating sentiment. And this is really also easy to do and kind of adds a little bit of a wow factor. Just trimming off all the extra white here. And then I'm gonna trim the top line off. And I can even shorten this up a little bit. You could make the ends like dovetailed or add, you know, whatever you wanna do. I just wanna make it nice and short so that when I put glue under the part that says you call it, let's do it that way. And then we can put glue on this and just add this to the piece in the center. And I'm gonna stick it down here at the bottom so it gives you lots of room to write up top. So what do you guys think? That is a floating banner card. Um, I really like this layout. I think I might try it again in a couple other, um, with a couple other images. One of the things you could, I mean, you could switch up the coffee cup. I thought about doing blue. I had these left over from another project earlier, um, but I think I like the pink better. I like the pink and the yellow. It just pops. It just really is attractive. I would always love to know your thoughts. Tell me what you think. Did the spongy make a difference? What did you think of all the processes? Is this something you would do? I hope you guys have a great time crafting, and I'll see you guys um, on the next craft video.